Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where I talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Why the Last Man. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, let's start off with, um, well, Hero and uh, Roxanne. Obviously, they find a place, an interesting place, because I guess like somehow they've compiled all these recordings. It's like... I guess, like, in case people want to, like, hear men's voices again, and Hero stalk, you know, and others, like, check the place out, and so Roxanne gives the orders, and now Nora was like, alright, make sure the first thing we do is get food, Roxanne riled everyone up, oh, let's take their tents, their food, or whatever, but the problem is, none of them, like, spared any of the stuff, they were, like, cutting stuff up and destroying stuff, and just, like, Nora's like, what are you doing out your, out your damn mind, like, these are plenty of supplies, but they got so riled up, Roxanne's so proud of him, but, like, Nora's the one that's pissed, even to the point she took the bat that Roxanne gave her, was like, Laura, stop with the damn, like, corn puffs or whatever, and it's like, my name's Athena, but it's like, because I guess in particular, because it's like, right, you're ruining all this good food, you're destroying it, you, you're not thinking about ahead of time, it's like, yeah, they got some supplies, they're knocking over jugs, or what. it's like, you're, they're just, they're being so destroyed, like, they're, they're caught in a frenzy, because Roxanne hyped them up, but, it's like, they're still, this is stuff we could use, they're breaking stuff, she's, and you know, Nora has to be like, we could have traded that, but Roxanne's like, oh, you, like, you worry too much, it's like, no, and it's like, that's the problem, like, Roxanne is, like, so, like, all about, like, running things her way and just, like, that's the thing. Nora thinks ahead, but maybe the argument could be that N Roxanne's a little too free-spirited about, like, I, it's weird to say free-spirited, but, like, she too runs too wild with this. She's kind of unpredictable, whereas Nora is a little too rigid in certain things. I think there's, like, there's a happy medium, but it's, like... Nora's main concern is making sure that her and her daughter are able to survive and it's like she's surrounding herself by people that can help her survive um but I mean Hero was kind of caught up in the moment with it all um but uh, when it was all said and done like it turns out Roxanne like told Hero's business to other people about the whole situation it's like yeah your boyfriend you killed him right and it's interesting because Nora continues to try and bond with Hero because I think she's still trying to keep Hero close because it's like, right, I can still... I don't know if she's still thinking about that because, I mean, that is that speaks volumes too and I think that's kind of the point Nora was going for. But initially, she's like, I'm an angry person. She's like, I used to get mad all the time. Like, she's like, I don't even know why. Like, even when my husband went grocery shopping, I was like, peppers. He's like, red or yellow and just like, she's almost, she was like, peppers or peppers doesn't damn it matter. But, and she talks about all she ever did, she she thought like, oh, I had to, I did, you know, the, the the typical right path of like, right, husband, kids. I thought I was okay, you know, but I wanted to be better. I think like better than like giving into her anger. But she's like, that's who I am. It's why I I was able to keep me and Mac alive because I'm angry, you know. And it's like next time you shouldn't trust Roxanne with your secrets. She's not worthy of it. But also showing the point of. No, guess what? I known about you being Jennifer Brown's daughter. I haven't uttered a word to anybody. I've kept your secret. Roxanne, the moment you tell her something like that, what has she done? She's run her mouth off to the entire group. It's for a purpose of like, I get it. It's like then stealing everyone else. Like, yeah, look what Hero did. She's definitely one of us, but it's still like, I told you that in confidence. I didn't want you like, yeah, I might try to be moving past it, but when I have other people knowing the sin of I that I've done, you know, it, it just, you know, it's like, right, she thought she could confide in Roxanne because she thought maybe, I think maybe for her, she's like, Roxanne sees me for me and accepts me for me. I get to finally just not have to be beholden to anyone else. But now it's like, oh, she's running around telling my secrets. Like, I didn't, I didn't want, like, it, it was my, like, if I wanted everyone to know, I would have made sure everyone knew. I wasn't comfortable. Like, one-on-one, -on -one, Roxanne made her feel comfortable enough to tell her that, um, uh, but to have her like, you know, but I think Nora's positioning herself in a well position to be like, oh, like I'm someone you can trust, especially because Rock, uh, because Nora knows Roxanne's mainly full of shit because she knows like, I mean, a lot of her messaging. Yes, it's kind of coming from her own place because she's the very like, I mean, considering like her experience with men and just like men ruined her life. So, of course, she's going to like have the perspective she's going to have. But like Nora knows who Roxanne is. Oh, you're not a cop. You well, I don't know how much Nora knows about 
how much of that backstory Norris picked up from the others about how they met Roxanne. So now it puts in question in light. So everything between you and this entire group has been utter BS. Because we got this background story last episode, but I don't know how much of that spread to the others. And how much, like, how much is, like, n was that supposed to be representative of, like, Nora has been picking up the story little by little? But at the very least, it makes it clear that Roxanne's not who she claims to be. And so I think that, in turn, makes it so that you can't believe half the stuff that comes out of her mouth because it's a, most likely a lie. So I think that in itself is enough, but... The, the in, like, how she... Because if she's not a cop, that means the way she came about, like presenting herself to them it's like so we can't believe you about that how can we believe about the attack wait was that you know so I, I don't know if that's kind of like the snowball effect they would go about it or would it just be no like nor straight up knows because she heard the story like just as we got it told maybe she heard the story from other people at the same time so maybe that's the parallel they're kind of going for of like oh like they found because she's talked a little bit about like that whole i don't know if she's no but they not within the confines of the show like while hero and uh, Nora or even Sam was a part of the group like I don't think Roxanne's story ever really came up like that like her being a cop I think might be the only thing that ever came up regardless uh, it's just it's a very peculiar uh, situation but um, obviously, obviously Roxanne's main mission behind everything this whole you know it's like leading this group because this group has been led by anger so for Roxanne it's the only way to keep them around and her own she made a makeshift family and she's trying to do everything she can to keep it together so obviously she calls Nora out for this like oh you're just scared and you're just looking for a place to hide and it's like well Nora I mean um Roxanne just wants to go out and kill all the men that are left because she's heard like right there's a list of names of men that are still alive potentially and so it's like we need to go track them down and uh, kill them all they, they can't survive but um, obviously one of the ladies uh, she was there when um, a little while back when uh, she's one of the people that had a run in with uh, Yorick and Sarah uh, well 355 uh, and she's like, right, there's a man. We believe he's nearby. There's a place with electricity. So Nora does what she does best. She's like, you're right. I was scared. But uh, this man, he can't hide from us. It's like she she knows how to manipulate Roxanne. So it's like, right. Yeah, you're right. I was I was scared. There's a man here. We should get him. There's stuff here, too. But, you know, he can't hide from us. It's mainly that. Not knowing that that's uh, Yorick. Not knowing that, you know, well, she knows who York is, but doesn't recognize that that's him. Won't until they get there. And the hero's going to be like, wait, York? It's it's going to be a whole thing, I'm sure. And like, so those storylines are going to be converging in, in that moment. I think that's going to be interesting. But, uh, yeah. Uh, but she, she knows, like, right, I got to play this smart. I got to use Roxanne against her. Like, I know that she's on this edge. Like, if I can at least point her in direction of men, you know, at the very least, I can find us a good enough place to, like, hunker down. I, I can just, I can point her, uh, well, she's got her own rage, but, um, she's, like, uh, at least I think, I, I think, not what she is trying to be like, no, like, she's completely submitting to, um, Roxanne, but I think it's like, no, like, let me point you in the right direction, um, you're my gun, let me fire you in the right direction type of thing. So we'll, we'll see how that how that all plays out. But speaking of York, obviously they have a kind of a celebration. And uh, what was it, kind of like every Saturday. And I love Allison's being like, oh, that sounds so like exhausting. But I love that it's um, No Scrubs by TLC and York starts dancing. He's like, oh no, come on, uh, 355. Like, oh, oh, you can't move, dance, can you? And they start dancing and having fun together. And it's like, yeah, I love their relationship. I also love that he tried to explain, like, he's like, yeah, no, yeah, uh, w women, and it just like, and I just love that she's like, I'm glad that a man could explain prison to me or something like that. Because he's trying to say, like, yeah, like, women are less likely to start stuff. But then, like, she had to be, Sonya had to be like, yeah, but most of the women here started shit. So I don't know where you're coming from. But he was like, statistically, and Allison's like, oh, statistically. He's like, no, 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 no. Because it's like, why are you whispering? He's like, you know, I don't want to. Yeah, but you whispered racism. He's like, no, 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 no. I, I love they kept digging himself in a deep hole. I love it. Um, uh, because he was talking about systemic racism. It's like, why'd you have to whisper that part? But, um, nevertheless, um, they're kind of having fun, and you could tell, like, I think it, like, the way, like, they're spending so much time together, like, because they have that flow, like. It seemed like it was bothering both Sonya and Allison because Allison like goes meet up with Dominique. She's like, "Yeah, I'm just trying to see like um, 
what the temperature is like i mean some of these people don't like us but it's like yeah i can fuck whoever i want to but i'm like oh allison like i i felt it like last episode was it last episode there was like there was a vibe of her in three feet three five three five five, three, five, five, five. and so i was like oh it seems like that's kind of there and it was almost like her being like oh don't you could be a little less judgmental don't it seems like there's something there um but even Sonya was kind of feeling it because it's like, oh, I found this thing. Like, what is it? Is it a receiver? Like, uh, is it a detonator? What is it? And um, saying like, oh, you should tell York because for whatever fucking reason, he trusts you. The difference between you and me, you and me were kind of the same. But the difference is at least I can admit that I like him. I don't know if 355 sees him that way, but I think she does like, he is like a buddy to her. Like, it's like he legitimately is probably like the closest thing she's had to a friend in a very, very long time. Maybe it's more than that. I don't think it is, but it, I mean, it could be. But I, I definitely feel like Allison definitely like likes three five five, like despite everything. Um, so that's almost that's what almost feels like the Dominique situation is almost like a substitute. Like oh, like I'm kind of like reluctant to kind of like test anything towards you. So it's like right, I I I will you know I'll get laid however I can. Um, at least that's kind of what that setup is. And then you have like Sonya and. Um, Yorick, where Yorick, uh, I forgot, like, because he starts asking about, like, all the place they're in, and Sonya's like, right, you don't want to be asking those type of questions, so she talks about, uh, what happened, like, most of, it turns out most of the guards at this prison were men, I guess, I don't know, I guess it's in my head, I just assumed, like, because it's a woman's prison, like, the guards would mainly be women, because I, but I mean, you know, I guess there's enough women there, but it's probably, like, maybe the, the percentage is maybe, like, 75, 25, 75 men to 25 women guards. Uh, but the men dropped dead, and then the female guards, like, all blamed them. So they locked them up, and by the time—it took them a couple of days, but they finally got left out. They finally uh, broke out, but when they did, the guards were waiting with weapons and uh, attacked them. It's like, yeah, it's almost like they forgot we were people, and, it, you know, it sucks that that happened to them. Now, is that, I'd assume that is the truth, then, because it, it definitely seemed like they made it kind of pretty clear, like, oh, they are kind of hiding stuff of, like, oh, yeah, people are going to notice that those guards disappear, and there's going to be a lot of questions. It's like, yeah. So, I think there is truth. I think Soyan did tell the truth about that. It's like, they did what they, you know, because York tried to be like, yeah, you had, you had, you did, uh, he's like, I'm not trying to judge you. I, I know you did what you had to do, and she's like, well, how do you know that? Because it's just York talking from the perspective of, like, yeah, everyone's had to do stuff they're not proud of. And that was also a thing, too, because um, Allison was talking about Dominique only being, like, a getaway driver. It's not like she killed anyone. Obviously, that resonates. Obviously, she didn't really realize it at the time, but it's like, yeah, that resonated with uh, 355 because it's like, yeah, she's killed people. Because in this episode, we're kind of going back a little bit with her time with Fran. Because, like, she got recruited young. And I'm assuming, like, everyone from the CR is someone that, at least the people that Fran, I don't know if Fran recruited everyone or at least like a very specific group like uh the agent she ran into before was it uh 525 was one of them it's this situation of like she's been a part of 355's life since she was a little girl like since she lost her parents and so it's like all she had to latch on to was this the test the like at that moment you see her kind of breaking down and if friends like right they're watching us i'm assuming that's like after a mission after she did something that it was probably her first time actually straight up killing somebody for a mission, and it probably took its toll on her. And it's like, right, like, this world, um, and this kind of ties into, like, Beth's situation, too, but it's kind of like, oh, this world isn't built for you, but this, being here right now will give you a leg up. You've proven yourself. Like, most people don't even get this far, even to the training you know, they most a lot of people don't make it past the screening process, let alone the training. But here you are, you've proven yourself, you know. And so it's like basically you have a leg up in this world. Now, I don't know whether she's specifically talking about that from a perspective of, oh, uh, 355 being a woman, a black woman. I don't know if it, if it was necessarily from that perspective. Maybe it's just someone from with her specific background or just kind of being in the system. Maybe it's a combination of all of it. But it's like, yeah, it can give you a leg up. And for some reason, the entire time, she's kept the receiver on because she's hoping to get in contact with friend. But she ultimately destroys it because I think for the first time, it's like, right, I've been holding on to this system. Like, I don't need you anymore because it's just like, you're just a reminder of everything that you made me into. This weapon that I'm, I was made into, this killer I was made into. And so I think for her, it's just like... No, like, she destroys it because I think for her, she wants to let go. Like, she, she's like, I've been holding on to that. Like, 
Cause I, cause it's like Fran was like the closest thing she had to a mother, but I think maybe it put things in perspective of like, no, you're just a like five two five was saying like, why do I have loyalty to you? Like we're not special. I'm just someone you took on your wing, but you made me feel special when I felt so alone. You were there for me, but what what you put me through, what you made me into, it's like no, no, no. I might have survived now because of that, but I'm not gonna hold on to you anymore. So it's like I'm assuming eventually she is gonna show up because. Um, that transponder, she probably has, like, received it, and she's probably on her way, probably with other people. Who knows? But I think this is the point where, like, so many storylines are going to converge. I'm sure she still hasn't told Yorick about it, but it's going to, like, even though she destroyed it, it's been on this entire time. So they have a general idea. They know where, like, the last responder, like, the last ping from it was. So it's most likely, like, that's going to converge. Roxanne's, uh, Roxanne's group is going to converge on that point, too, or Hero and... Sarah and, I mean, well, 355 and Allison are. Because uh, I, I think that's going to be interesting because it's like, yeah, there's Roxanne's group, but these are women who were locked up too, so they're not going to be like pushovers. So I think things are going to get nasty next episode in that regard. Hell, things got nasty at the, the freaking um, White House because it's like, right, um, Regina was able to convince that um, military uh, person that like, right, She's willing to go along with like Regina and Kimberly because it's like, right, you um you um she killed two of my pilots, so yes, I need to like jump on top of like we need to like take her down for what she did because they were killed on her orders, so and uh Regina tells Kimberly like she needs to snap out of it. Your mom's death, yada yada yada. You need to snap out of it because I, I need your support. Like a lot of people aren't gonna back me unless I have your support. She's the one that can sway most people. So she does pick up this piece of glass, and I was like, is she going to, like, kill herself? But it's like, no, it didn't happen. Or whether she was considered, I mean, maybe it crossed her mind, who knows. Or maybe she was going to use that against Jennifer, I don't know. But obviously they go behind her back and get her, her uh, the people that are on her side. And it's like, yep, Yorick was seen. And it's like, wait, no, 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 no. And because Reg Regina just, not Regina, but um, Jennifer just had a conversation with uh, Christine because she found out that Christine's pregnant. And it's like, you know, but obviously Christine's like, right, it wasn't with someone she loved. And she's kind of worried because she did want kids eventually. But she's also scared of like what kind of world she's bringing them in. But Jennifer's like, it's okay. Like, I was scared. I didn't think I was ready. I thought I was going to screw up when I was pregnant with her. But at the end of the day, it's like, all you can do is try to do your best so but uh when it came down to it like uh jennifer got backed into a corner especially because uh kimberly tried to be like hey like christine you can't come from her anymore now she's the president so she'll like she won't get too bad of a punishment but you you're a nobody those, those people out of the gate they will rip you piece to piece and obviously christine's pregnant so jennifer protects her it's like no 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 right she didn't know anything it was me it's like wait it's true it's like yep she's open yep york's alive it's like how could you not tell us even later on someone's like you should have told us she's like would you have if you found out your son's the only survivor because the whole point of it too is like people are already screaming conspiracy we find out on top of it that your son is alive it's it's no like if they find out like your son's alive, like, that's just going to fuel it even more, because once again, it's the optics of, oh, you might have lost your husband, it's like, but then the question to me, like, is your husband really dead? If, you're, if your son's alive, your entire, like, people will start probably thinking, like, oh, your entire family's alive, then, it's like, no, her husband's dead, she thought York was dead, she tried to explain that to people, but, like, you know, Regina's saying, like, no, it should be me, but other people in her cabinet are like, no, 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 it should come to me, it's like, no, Ted chose me, you know, because someone is like, right, I'll be a fill-in president until we actually have an election, but it's like, no, Ted told, chose Regina, and you can see that look on Kimberly's face when she's happy, she's like, yeah, Jennifer, like, you get to go it's because you made my mom seem crazy she killed herself because of you you might as well have pushed her off the edge yourself it's like to be fair your mom wasn't in the best place i'm not justifying it but she definitely was not in the best place at that time um i think what hit i mean because for kimberly it's like you know it's like she lost her sons and that's the biggest resentment she has though it's like why her? Why does she get to keep her boy when I lost my boys? I lost I lost my husband. I lost my boys. I've lost my mom. I've lost everything. Yet you still, you're still a president. You, Your son is still out there. Your daughter's potentially out there. It's like, why do you get to have everything? Once again, that, that conversation coming back full circle of just some people, you know, lost more to grieve over than others. You know, and I'm sure that's Kimberly's perspective. Timing could not be worse for a power grab because... Hey, Beth and her group decide to bust on through. 
they set up explosives and obviously it was a situation of like Beth looks at the dead body of like of so I think someone that was killed during the explosion and was just like she wasn't expecting that because for her it's like she even said like Jennifer Brown isn't a bad person she's just part of a system that we have to basically tear down like what the old world was we can't they're still holding on to that system of like oh if only like you know what she said like if someone was in that situation if only she could have made a call it's like it's not her fault it's just she's part of a system that needs to die like the world was broken before and like we need to like we don't need this system anymore we need to tear it down to kind of make something new in its place and so they're kind of revolutionaries and you know from in their perspective in their mind so they're planning on taking down the white house so they can tear down that building tear down that system that something new can be built in a, in a wake but they're just you know I, I don't know maybe maybe you could call it naive considering everything that's going on because i think the question then becomes like right how much did they know why didn't they really prepare the world like i think a lot of that plays into it but it's like yeah the world isn't in a bit good place and they're like not helping the situation because they're so uh connected to an antiquated system you know the world is different this this ain't the same world and that same system isn't going to work it wasn't working before it sure hell ain't going to work in the apocalypse and what's going to come afterwards so they break in there and immediately even with the mask on jennifer could tell it was uh she could tell it was uh, Beth, but obviously it's like they roll through. They sit, they pull the military people away, which I'm like, did they take them off somewhere and kill them? Because Beth, maybe not, because Beth was like, right, you promised that no one was going to get hurt. But look, who, lo and behold, who it is, uh, Regina is the opportunist that she is. It's like, I figured you, because I guess like, right, she wanted to show like, if I'm president, I'm more likely not to get hurt. As I'm sure that was her justification, but it was like, it's like, right, let's not tell them about York because they're already in a frenzy and they, and they find out that we're lying. Then that's just going to add more fuel to the fire. So, you know, they're all like zip tied. And now it's a situation of like, OK, like the military is coming in because Kimberly told them exactly what it was. So it's like, right, we can't just like wait. Uh, it's like things didn't go according to plan. And it's like once again, it's like they didn't have this on lock. It's, it's kind of the point. So, because the whole point was like, all right, who's the president, Jennifer Brown or uh, Regina? But like some of the military people were asking for Regina because she was president. And it's like, wait, what? It's like, yeah, Jennifer was trying to keep them calm. She's like, right, let everyone go. I can give you whatever you need. But Regina had to run her mouth with me because she didn't want to prove not useful because it's just like, no, 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 this is my, I'm the president. It's like, part of you would probably think like, no, 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 let Jennifer go ahead and like, let us go. But it's like, no, like Regina had to be like, no, I'm not going to let like Jennifer dictate things. Like she doesn't know how to lead. She doesn't know how to do the right thing. It's like, yeah, she's been doing this a little bit longer than you. She's, she's got a more centered perspective on this than you or, you know, so you kind of. She she was in a position to try and calm everyone down, but Regina had to like, she was just, she wasn't, she was just, I mean, to be fair, like anyone, she's acting out of fear. Like, I mean, who wouldn't be scared in that situation? So you're just trying to make sure you survive. She just did the wrong thing. And so she's always, she's like, oh, you shouldn't trust Jennifer. Don't let her, blah, 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 blah. Regina's like, I'm the one you should be talking to. Her, Jennifer Brown's son is alive. And that lady pops her in the head and like, and she's still twitching. So it's like, oh, cool. Not cool as in cool, just like, damn, that sucked, kind of like, oh, cool, 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 that just happened, and there's Kimberly's covered in her blood, it's like, okay, there's your candidate that you were backing, um, because even Kimberly part three, wait, through, was like, Virginia, what are you doing, stop, you know, but, um, we see her kind of twitching on the ground, it's like, it's just, it comes full circle, because, like, she was kind of, had a head injury and everything before, uh, when she was found before, and now it's like, yeah, she was just, I, I don't know if it was a situation, like, but her body was twitching after, like, she was still alive. She hadn't, like, completely died from it yet, so that was kind of horrible to watch. And once again, Beth was like, I didn't want anyone to get hurt. No one was supposed to get hurt. This is kind of supposed to be, we get what we want, to, but it's like, no. So they end up splitting up the groups. Um, Beth is with Christine, Kimberly, and Jennifer, and obviously, like some, like the military comes through, and one of them is like, "Hey, it's me. I'm part of it," and gets shot because they're just assuming anyone they see isn't a part of this. Um, could be a part of this. It's like, "Rod, you're killing people in Jennifer's cabinet." Uh, once again, the timing could not be worse, if not better, considering it's like, right? They were all like, essentially, like overthrowing her to it. Well, Regina and Be uh, Kimberly's uh, 
coup could not have come at the worst possible time. So that was interesting. Uh, Beth ends up having Je uh, taking Jennifer, but um, right, like shots are being fired. Like no one can't tell an ally from enemy. Um, Kimberly goes off with Christine, and there was someone like I, I I don't know who she was. Like I don't know, maybe she was a lower ranking person at the White House, or maybe she was part of uh, Beth's group. But she she recognizes Kimberly, and it's like oh, um, and ends up attacking her. Uh, but then Christine, like, tries to defend her, and Kimberly's like, don't you touch her, and that piece of glass comes back full circle, and she stabs her, and Jen Christine's like, oh my god, you, like, oh my god, you killed her, and she's like, don't worry, it's okay, I got you, and she's, like, touching Christine's stomach, and it's almost like, yeah, the only reason why she's looking out for you is because you've got the future of humanity right now, like, you're the only person that they're aware of currently that's pregnant, and can get pregnant, so... She, you know, it's like it's more so about the 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 holy grail that's inside of you that could be the next start of um next stage for humanity. And then Jennifer's taken away by Beth, and Beth, it's, you know, gives her the coat to kind of cover herself up and hide. And it's like she's like York, and then like Christine's like, I mean, uh, Jennifer's like, yes. So it's like now Beth knows the truth. It's like wow. So she's gonna have some questions or. I don't know. It's definitely going to be interesting because, like, yeah, the White House falls. Most of the best people are probably going to end up dead. Um, I'm a, I'm going to assume, like, everything is going to get taken care of and Kimberly's going to become president now. That's what I'm thinking. Um, I just get that feeling just because it's like, right, right. I, like, I figured she was more like, because, once again, Regina was always going to just be the figurehead. It was always going to be Kimberly, you know, but it's like now, now, like, if she can put her, she's gonna put herself in a powerful enough position. Granted, all the like all the like files and stuff. Like, I mean, to be fair, the White House is also because like all the files and stuff were burned, so that central hub is gone. So everyone's potentially scattering. So the aftermath of that, I don't know. It's definitely gonna be interesting to see what happens next, um, because they didn't even get the information they wanted. Because Jennifer's the only one that really has it. Because that was the thing. Virginia was like, "Oh no, no, I'm the one you should answer to." It's like they were almost like anyone else was like, "Shut up." Do you even know where the local, like, food resources that we get are from? No, Jennifer does. So shut your damn mouth. And it's like, she didn't want to listen, so. And it costs her her life in the process. So, it's definitely going to be interesting to see where things go. The season finale, I have to say that with quotes, just because it seems more like a series finale. But I don't know if anything's adjusted and changed for the show. I have heard talks, um... Mark and uh, Kevin talked about it m more recently on a, uh, it might have been the most recent, uh, yeah, Fat Man Beyond, I believe, because it was the one that um, they did about DC Fandom. Mark talked about potentially, and I hope this is the case, that HBO, is, well, Warner Brothers, is trying to acquire it. I mean, this is like a Vertigo, like, properly, at least like the comic book is, but it's like, and they also talked about it's not necessarily viewership or reception. It was because this is one of those shows, kind of almost like the Stumptown thing, except a little differently, like, where it's just it was impacted by um, COVID, like COVID, like cause screwed over, like because it just it became even more costly because they had to hold over a lot of the cast because it just wanted it just uh, it's a victim of a uh, um, the pandemic that kind of um, screwed up this whole like you know plus they had to shift showrunners apparently so they were saying like they were talking about that being contributing factors of why the show got canceled so it just be it was just too much it, it was just a weighing of options of like how much money they had to spend on it whether or not it's worth really like retaining those people even longer to like it's just it, it was so expensive is what it came down to so they were talking about potentially HBO Warner Brothers, which DC's under the Warner Brother Warner Brother Warner Brothers umbrella, so potentially they might be trying to get it. So, but it also would mean they'd have to spend the money to get the rights to season one as well. We'll see. I mean, to be fair, they've done that with Pennyworth. They bought that from Epics. Uh, they got the first two seasons, and now they have the third season. So, uh, I could definitely see this if it possible. I'd be. I'd, I'd, I'd be if they could get, like, if this show could live on, like, an HBO Max or something like that, I would hope so. I, I, I would want the show to live on, like, because I, I, I'm so invested in it, and I want it to see it kind of, you know, it's always a bummer, like, when any show gets canceled, but especially after its first season, you, it's like, you just, you just got started. You, you didn't even have a chance to go into a full-blown sprint yet, you know, it, it's kind of my point, but, um, so we'll see. 
Um, that was like the last time I looked at it, even before recording this, I haven't looked into it yet, but I'll look into it more before or during, before my recording of the season finale review, but still, um, I'm, I'm interested to see what happens in the next episode where the season ends up ending off, uh, but really that's all I want to talk about to the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, we'll like to the fullest and enjoy it, good day and goodbye.